Imagine you have a quote unquote strange addiction. You eat sand, drink paint, or maybe you're just addicted to cheesy potatoes. You've had this problem your entire life. Your family and friends think you're nuts. Doctors and therapists have no idea how to help you. And things generally feel hopeless. But one day, by some miracle, you come across a want ad online. The ad describes your exact situation. It says they'll send out their expert team that knows exactly how to cure your strange addiction once and for all. So you send them an email and for the first time in a long time, you have hope that this will be the thing that finally helps you change your life. Except you just called TLC and this is the crack team that they sent to help you. Dr. Mike Dow. I'm Dr. Mike Dow. I'm a licensed psychotherapist specializing in addictive behaviors and disordered eating. And JJ Virgin. I'm JJ Virgin. Hi. I'm a certified nutrition specialist and a certified health and fitness specialist. TLC's expert team from their show, Freaky Eaters. If you've never heard of the show, it follows these two as they try to help people who are addicted to eating weird or specific foods. Except pretty much everything that they do is unhelpful to say the least. If this is your first time watching my channel, I generally discuss behavior change and how we can actually make helpful changes in our lives. This is potentially the worst behavior change show on TV. A freaky eater is someone who takes an eating habit to the extreme. One of the most iconic episodes, in my opinion, is the one on this 34-year-old woman, Kelly, who's addicted to cheesy potatoes. Each and every day, Kelly eats a minimum of eight potatoes and four cups of cheese. All Kelly has eaten for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for 30 years is cheesy potatoes. And I can remember seeing this clip of Kelly trying a Brussels sprout and then bursting into tears. probably 10 years ago and thinking that this woman was just dramatic and didn't like vegetables. But I probably made this assumption because Freaky Eaters does such a terrible job of explaining the real life situations that lead to situations like this. But maybe that's because TLC assumes that people aren't really watching for that, are they? To quote JJ Virgin, the co-host of the show, people tune in for the freak factor. I suppose this quote could be taken out of context. Maybe JJ said something really nice after, like, but what people don't know is this type of eating behavior is more common than you think, and often is a result of a phobia or some sort of deep-rooted emotional issue or even trauma. But given all the problematic aspects of this show and how little care or caution goes into the actual treatment, I feel like the likelihood that that was out of context is sort of low. But we're gonna give JJ the benefit of the doubt for now. 34-year-old Kelly eats nothing but cheesy potatoes, morning, noon, and night. So Kelly is addicted to cheesy potatoes, but beyond that, she's physically repulsed by most foods to the point of gagging in their presence. Kelly can't stand to smell or even touch most foods, especially vegetables. Every time I've tried to cook her a little something extra, she just refuses. <laughs> Okay. These two have been married for seven years and out of all foods to get her to try, he went for the Brussels sprout, AKA the vegetable once described as the most hated vegetable in America. I do not buy that this sweet angel of a husband came up with this bright idea by himself without being duped into it by TLC's producers. My wife, Kelly, is a freaky eater. At first glance, crying and gagging over a Brussels sprout might seem over the top, but Kelly might actually have what's called avoidant restrictive food intake disorder. People who have this disorder are often so repulsed by other foods that if they can't consume their safe food or their priority food, they will literally choose to eat nothing instead. This is something that usually starts in early childhood, such as the case for Kelly, who thinks it began when she was sent to a relative's house and forced to eat something that didn't agree with her. My mom told them that I don't like ham and eggs. They made me eat them and I threw it up all over the table. And even if that's not what's going on here, because obviously the entire thing could be fake or, I mean, we don't even have that much information to go off to begin with. This could be a phobia or generalized anxiety or some sort of OCD offshoot. It could be a genetic distaste for different flavors. Who really knows? There are potentially so many reasons that this behavior could have taken over Kelly's life. So though it's marketed as freaky, it's not just a case of someone avoiding eating their greens. So what is this crack team gonna do for this very complex and nuanced behavioral, psychological and emotional issue? All right, Dr. Dow. 
Chalk therapy, aka making a physically large example out of whatever the person on the show is addicted to. And probably like 90% of what happens on this entire show. So Josh, this is how much pizza you eat in a year. This is the amount of cola you drink in one month. Yeah, this whole thing here, this is pretty much the only therapy that gets administered the entire show. Except it's not really a therapy at all, is it? It's not a thing at all. And if you try and look it up, you'll be directed to another form of shock therapy, which is a thing. But regardless, in this situation, this wheelbarrow full of potatoes and Ziploc baggies full of cheese were at least effective at getting Kelly motivated to want to make a change. Kelly, what do you want to say to these cheesy potatoes? <laughs> I don't even want to look at <laughs> Disgusting. Now, another name for this technique might be called emotional arousal. It could be considered a motivation strategy, but you don't need a wheelbarrow full of potatoes or a Mack truck full of hamburgers to do it. An inspirational YouTube video could work. Spending an afternoon reflecting on the pros and cons of your change could work. And even just being on the show, these would all count as emotional arousal incidents. So all of this is both highly unnecessary and not particularly effective. And there's really no evidence that it would be any more effective than just having Kelly watch a really emotional YouTube video. And the thing is, though this episode's shock therapy was pretty mild and mostly harmless, in half the episodes, they take it way too far. In one of the very first episodes, a woman named Christine was addicted to sugar. Sugar makes you happy. And uh, so when you're eating sugar constantly, you're happy. And I wanted my kids to think I was happy. I hated this episode so much because it just felt way too real. A lot of the times Freaky Eaters feels, and probably is, extremely staged and fake. But for whatever reason, this episode, felt very real. Because I just can't let people know <laughs> that I have all this pain. And the entire time, I just felt this building grave sense of concern for what these two were going to do to this poor woman. Here's what these two addiction experts thought was appropriate shock therapy for this. You guys see where they're walking right now, right? <laughs> the whole point of the shock therapy is for her to make that extreme connection that what she's putting into her mouth is gonna put her into the grave. Oh my God. It was a grave made out of sugar. Yeah, Mike and JJ took this woman to a graveyard and constructed a grave with her name on it. Not one person at the TLC offices thought, you know what, hey, maybe this is a little bit too far. This is, after all, someone's life. Maybe this is just a little bit unethical. Like this has to be some sort of ethics violation. You gotta be kidding. We have more to show you. As we get to know JJ, you'll notice that she occasionally enjoys adding a little sprinkle of sass that's super appropriate to the situation. You know, when you're supposed to be non-judgmentally helping this woman with her addiction. And to top it all off, the cherry on top. They decide to finish the intervention with her son. Mom. Reading her a letter as if she had already died from her sugar addiction. That decision ultimately left me without a mom. This is not okay, point blank. It's not okay. You know, there's so many potentially useful psychological tests that we can't perform on humans because it's, you know, unethical and you can't just like mess with people's lives, even, even if it's for the greater good. But I guess TLC is just free to do whatever they want for the sake of reality TV. Anyway, back to Kelly's therapy session. <laughs> thought I was healthy. I just thought I was just overweight. You're morbidly obese. You've got metabolic syndrome. You are in no way healthy. JJ and Dr. Dow end up showing Kelly some tests that show that she's not as healthy as she thought. And again, this is effective at motivating her. I can't go on like this anymore. I am motivated now, whatever it takes. So everything that the show has done thus far can be considered a motivational strategy and it has actually succeeded at that goal. But let's refer to a successful evidence-based model of behavior change, okay? To change, we need three things. Motivation, skill, and opportunity. 
A lot of people like to say that motivation is bullshit, but that's not true. We do need motivation to change our behavior according to these evidence-based models. We do need motivation throughout the behavioral change process and definitely a spark at the beginning. However, it's just one piece of the puzzle. So to be a successful behavioral change intervention like this show is pretending to be, the show would now need to switch its focus to the other two components to actually have any genuine hope of assisting Kelly with her cheesy potatoes addiction. So so let's see where they take that. Next is graded exposure therapy with Dr. Mike Dow. So this is actually an evidence-based treatment for phobias. So good job TLC, you did literally one thing right. The next stage though, I guess they just literally couldn't resist in taking it too far as per usual. So they're having Kelly try out burritos with cheesy potatoes plus mystery ingredients. And they start small with just a burrito full of cheesy potatoes. Well, I'm used to. Mm. Normal. Kelly apparently already consumed tortillas on the weekend, so this first round is nothing new. They then move her up to one single slice of lettuce. Look in there. That's a new color for you. <laughs> That's green. How do you do this? Seeing my wife eat romaine lettuce, I was excited. And it's all going well. It's all per the protocol for graded exposure therapy. They're building Kelly's confidence slowly and they're demonstrating to her anxious brain that there's no reason to fear and she can consume other foods without throwing up. And by teaching Kelly that she can in fact eat other foods, they're actually enhancing the skill component of behavior change. How do you do this? But then they get to the third burrito and of course JJ and Mike Dow have a surprise for Kelly. I immediately felt queasy in my stomach. I tried to keep it in my mouth, but I just couldn't. That one's a little hard for okay. me. And they then revealed that that surprise was ham. If you don't recall, ham is one of the foods that Kelly is most fearful of. My mom told them that I don't like ham and eggs. They made me eat them and I threw it up all over the table. It's one of the foods that Kelly cites as the beginning of her phobia and anxiety surrounding food. This was the food that she remembered eating as a child and throwing up. So they use ham as the second food that Kelly has tried ever. It was lettuce and then directly to ham. To put it into perspective, imagine that Kelly had a phobia of snakes instead. And Mike and JJ just decided that the best course of action would be to just two hand shove Kelly into a snake pit. I feel like there's so much trust in her eyes here too, because she's not expecting these two experts to steer her wrong. And yet the entire point of graded exposure therapy, okay, graded, it, it means gradual. The point is to slowly teach the brain that there's no reason to be afraid. Ham would and should be the final boss of graded exposure therapy. It's not supposed to be some gotcha moment in the second burrito that she tries. And I know it maybe seems like, okay, the stakes aren't that high, it's a TLC show, but this is someone's life, you know what I mean? Like, and to call yourself experts and then to bring her on your TLC show to mess with her like that, it's just not okay. It's seriously not okay. This stupid decision could have been a major setback for this woman. And let's be real, that's probably what the show was going for. Best case scenario, Kelly pukes all over the table and then TLC has a viral clip to milk for the next 15 years. But in, in reality, this isn't TLC's fault. It's the expert's fault. You guys did this. You put her in this situation and you are the ones that should know better. It is just so clear that these two could not care less what happens to this person. Anyway, none of this treatment so far has really had anything at all to do with conquering the addiction they say Kelly has. So let's see what they do next. But we have something else that we're going to add into the mix. Okay, so they're having her walk around the block carrying a bag of potatoes. Because I want her to really feel the weight of her cheesy potato habit. Okay, well, I don't really know that I've seen that addiction protocol before uh, and doesn't really fit the model at all, but maybe there's more. The experts have given Kelly the confidence to start trying different foods on her own. For the next four days, she'll try to break her cheesy potato addiction with a new health regimen. Yeah, that's literally it. That was a treatment. Kelly's cured now, guys. We can all go home now. On Kelly's end, she's earnestly giving her best shot, but with no tools. Each day, she tries a new vegetable, sometimes with a familiar topping, and sometimes she goes for a walk, which I guess was part of her homework. But unsurprisingly, Kelly's addiction is somewhat still a problem for her. I probably think about cheesy potatoes at least once an hour. I couldn't resist. I know they're so bad for me, but... I can't fight the cravings. Oh, what's that? Kelly's addiction wasn't magically cured by a wheelbarrow full of potatoes? The show did literally nothing to treat her addiction to cheesy potatoes. They did one session of graded exposure therapy to treat her phobia, which they royally 
fucked up. And then they did nothing. Kelly still doesn't even like any other food other than cheesy potatoes. What is she realistically supposed to do here? Oh, never mind, guys. The team is coming back, hopefully with some helpful tools and change strategies. The experts are also asking her to try eating a green salad. If she can pull this off, I'll know that we can leave in good faith. I mean, it's a good sign, but it's a little overconfident to assume your work here is done because she ate one salad. This was the first salad I've ever eaten in my entire life. I think eventually I'll start really liking it. It's great that she does it and she says that, you know, she thinks she's gonna enjoy eating salads in the future like that. Yeah, that's a big deal for her. But unfortunately, it's not super indicative of later or future success. Do you realize how far you have come? Did you think a week ago you could even have one bite of salad? This whole experience has taught me that if I put my mind to it, I can do anything. Wait, credits? You guys are leaving now? She had like one bite of salad. She, you guys didn't even wait for her to finish her meal. You guys still didn't do literally anything. That'd be like me abruptly ending the video right now out of nowhere. Okay, but the video is actually over now. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.